Natural rivers often run through forests, but this stream in South Dakota is particularly quiet. The flow of water is low, and the trail of fallen trees points to only one culprit. Beavers. These large rodents have been busy at work, chewing at trees with sharp teeth, swimming up and down, collecting logs and branches to build their dams. They use stones to help weigh down the base, and mud to help seal up the gaps, carefully blocking almost every part of the stream. Over time, water builds up to form a pond. It's a family business, and everyone chips in, or at least they're meant to. A beaver dam is a marvel of engineering that changes the surrounding landscape, and the final results are impressive. There are usually two parts to the work of a beaver, the dam and the lodge. Beavers build dams to help create a deep pond of quiet water, where they then build their home or lodge. The dam slows down the river flow so that the beaver's home doesn't wash away. It can stretch up to 10 feet high and 500 meters long. The lodge protects the beavers from predators and shelters them from bad weather. It can only be entered through underwater tunnels, making it the perfect refuge. Inside is a cosy chamber, lined with dry leaves, a great place to rest after hard day's work. Modern beavers are the only living members of their family, Castoridae. Once a diverse group of rodents, Castoridae now only contains two species the North American and Eurasian beavers. The family originated in the late Eocene, around 36 million years ago. These early creatures were small. They had large claws and short tails, pointing to a lifestyle made for digging rather than swimming. In fact, some specimens have even been found fossilized in the underground burrows, which are known as devil's corkscrews for their spiral shape but these ancient beavers actually dug burrows using their teeth, with large flat incisors similar to their modern-day cousins. Later in the early Miocene, around 20 million years ago, the beaver family split in two, with one branch staying underground while the other took to the water. This semi-aquatic group consisted of two subfamilies, Castorini, which includes the living beavers, and Castoroidini, which included giant beavers the size of bears. In the fossil record, the appearance of aquatic beavers coincides with the disappearance of terrestrial beavers. It's possible that prehistoric climate change is the reason why. When the planet cooled down and dried out, land beavers like Paleocasterids just couldn't adapt to the new world, and so they went extinct. But their semi-aquatic cousins thrived, they were sheltered from bad weather in their watery habitats, and they spread across North America, Europe, and continental Asia. It was around this time 20 million years ago that woodcutting behavior emerged in the semi-aquatic group, as fossils have been found near chewed wood. In this study, researchers analyzed the bones of extinct beavers to reconstruct their diet. They found that prehistoric beavers also had a taste for eating woody plants, which suggests they first gnawed on trees for feeding, long before they built dams. Today, modern beavers are well adapted for woodcutting. With powerful incisors, they can fell trees as wide as one meter in diameter. But often they go for smaller trees, cutting around the trunk and leaving the wind to do the rest. When a beaver targets larger trees, it's to reach the thinner branches on top, where the leaves, shoots, and bark are. Modern beavers also build and sink rafts of tree branches as a source of food during the winter. Early semi-aquatic beavers may have also engaged in this behavior. By hoarding food underwater, 
they could have survived the winter months of darkness when plants go dormant. In fact, their unusual diet alone may have allowed them to exploit the colder environments that arose during and after the late Miocene. This could have been key in allowing them to disperse between North America and Eurasia. But the story is quite different for giant beavers. As one of the largest rodents that ever lived, giant beavers disappeared during the megafaunal extinction around 12,000 years ago. In this same study, their diet was also reconstructed, and it seemed they moved away from eating woody plants. This evolutionary change in diet may have been a leading factor in their extinction, especially once they faced climate change. Meanwhile, on the lineage leading to modern beavers, dam building finally evolved around seven and a half million years ago. It's unlikely any of their earlier ancestors had built dams. Although they cut and ate woody plants, they were just too small to harvest whole trees. Take the modern beaver, it's a large rodent, with many weighing up to 30 kilograms. Its body size allows it enough strength to build and maintain dams over several years. Dam building may have first emerged after early beavers collected branches for feeding. Eventually, the growing pile of sticks could have created dams by pure luck, and the effects would have been huge. A deeper pond is a great defence as it provides a safe refuge from land predators. It also creates better conditions for underwater food hoarding, especially in winter, because deeper water would prevent the whole pond from being frozen over. Because of this, natural selection would have favoured those that maintained the dam, possibly as an extension of their pre-existing nesting behaviour. Swimming woodcutting, and a woody plant diet could have set the stage for the evolution of dam building, and the climate cooling that started around 15 million years ago and continued into the Pleistocene would have allowed a period for these behaviours to be selected for. Today, beavers are hardwired to build dams, and they're even known to be triggered by the sound of running water alone. But their behaviours don't just benefit them, Beavers reshape the face of their ecosystems. By gnawing down trees, they open up the woodlands around them, allowing other pioneering plants to grow. Their dams can act as natural filters, ridding pollution to clean streams of water. And they can also create the building blocks for wetland habitats, which attracts a large variety of other animals. This boom in biodiversity is why beavers are truly a keystone species.